Hi, St. Bart's Kids and Families. I'm Michelle. Thanks for stopping by today to join me in praying and learning about God's love and just taking a pause to hear God's word. The themes this week are symbolism. Symbolism in baptism, symbolism in water, and symbolism in the dove. Symbols are shapes or colors that mean something more. If I take my hands and I make this shape, everybody knows that's a heart. It can be a heart that's beating to keep me alive, or it could mean love. If we see something that is red and white and kind of furry with a little pom-pom on the top that we wear as a hat, we might think of a Santa hat. Something red that's an octagon, stop. Or maybe some stars and stripes, our flag. So there are lots of symbols. One of the, the funny ones is uh, bunny ears, anybody? Or it could mean two, or it could mean peace. So this week is what we call Epiphany, the first week after Epiphany. So just like the seasons of the year, we're in winter now and it's freezing out. Um, today, I think it was minus seven when I got up. We have winter, then comes spring, summer, and fall. In the church, we also have seasons, and we just finished Advent that led up into the birth of Jesus. From there, last week, we started with Epiphany, and that's when the, the wise men came to visit Jesus. So we're one week past that. So if you think back to the seasons, we would think, well, Jesus was born a couple of weeks ago, the story we're going to hear is about him being baptized by John the Baptist. It didn't happen when he was only two weeks old. Jesus was already grown. So if you're six, you count birthday one, two, three, four, five, six. This is Jesus when he was fully grown, about 30 years old. So you know, grab your votive candle, battery operated if you have it in a faith kit, or ask a grown-up if you can light a candle or a battery operated one. Get a pencil or a piece of paper or a crayon or a marker because we're gonna do some drawing at the end and take a pause, click on the button and let's have our opening song. You're back. That was a fun song. That really got us moving, I hope. I hope it made you stand up and dance. It sure made me want to dance. To know that Jesus is with us. He's in us. He walks with us. He's ever present. So now when we think about our symbols and our themes, let's first start with the Bible reading. And if you want to curl up on the couch, grab a Bible, or you can just sit and listen as well. This is from Luke. This is chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. As the people were filling with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chef he will burn with unquenchable fire. Then after the baptism, verses 21 to 23, what happened is now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. So, wow, that's a lot of symbolism going on there. First of all, what is a baptism? Is it like just taking a bath? Do you get baptized every night you take a bath? No, it's a very special type of thing that happens in some churches and with some families. Some families decide that they want to baptize their babies. Some people get baptized when they're older. Some 
use other forms of how they express themselves to be part of God's family. So what is baptism really? It's committing to God's team. We're on God's team. We're committing ourselves to a life of trying to be kind and good and loving. And it's an outward way of saying to everybody, hey, I'm part of team God. There's a lot of water in baptism and a lot of water is used in the Bible as a symbolism. If you think of us as humans, wow, how long can you go without a drink of water? Not very long. You might not have to eat anything for a little bit, but you've got to have water in order to live. And all living things need water. All the plants, all the animals, everything needs water. So if we think of God as water for our spirit, and we have a water bottle, all we have to do is open it and take a drink. God will fill us and quench our thirst for love and kindness. And lastly, the dove. The dove is used a lot in, in the Bible as a messenger and symbolizes the Holy Spirit. So I think of the Holy Spirit like this. If you, if you imagine God, however you imagine God, and you imagine the Holy Spirit, is that God sends an, maybe like an email. It's his word, it's his thoughts, but he's not stepping down from heaven to have that conversation. He's sending the dove, like you would send an email to somebody, it's your words or text, but it's not you standing right there. In Christianity, there are lots of symbols. And so I thought we would take a little bit of a pause and take a look. Some of the common ones are the cross that we see. There is one in our church as well. And most churches have some kind of a cross that are Christian. And it really symbolizes the victory over sin and death by Jesus' death and his sacrifice on the cross for us. There's also the Christian fish. And the Christian fi fish is a symbol that was easy to draw and many people could use that with a little toe in the sand to show somebody secretly that they were Christian and they followed Jesus and God. And there's also the dove. The dove is also a symbol of Christianity and peace. So right now, I'd like to just kind of take another pause and do a little drawing. So if you have a piece of paper or you have our faith kit, if you have one, great. If not, piece of paper, pencil, markers, whatever, is I want you to think for a second. Which one of the symbols do you think best describes God to you? And draw it. And lastly, your name. So when you think of a name, that's a symbol for who we are. But I'd like you to draw a symbol of what you think. What shape would you be? What color would you be? How would you decorate if somebody knew that that was a symbol for you? And I'll show you my symbol. I drew one. If I could do a symbol for me and I couldn't have my name, this would be my symbol. And it would be a shape of a heart because I always keep love at the center of what I try to think of each day when I wake up and every night before I go to bed, grateful for all that God has given me. And a rainbow for hope and peace and love. And I don't think you can see them very well, but there are five little swirly squigglies on each side of the top of the heart. And therefore, I have two daughters and I have two granddaughters and I also love dogs. So there are five on either side because they're always in my heart. So now it's time to come to an end and I hope that you enjoy this sending song. Peace.